Today we're going to talk about the Skin Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, regarding this topic, um, I have a few questions for you about um, topics for patients, like um, how to stay safe in the sun, what are your best tips, what can they do for themselves to check their skin, and then, of course, how a skin a cancer screening in your uh, practice looks like. Okay, so this is a very important subject for me because uh, I'm one of the doctors who actually devoted uh, my life to skin cancer prevention and also early detection of skin cancers. Uh, what is actually important is to spread the knowledge about uh, skin cancer uh, and the May is uh, the month when we speak a lot about prevention, of course. Uh, one thing is prevention, and this is uh, also very important, and we have to spread the knowledge about the, the um, risk factors and everything what actually causes skin cancers. And another is uh, the need for uh, control visits and to going to see a dermatologist in order to find the cancer uh, on time. Uh, well, when it comes to the you know, when it comes to the dermatology and when it comes to the uh, early detection of uh, skin cancers, then you have to know that uh, in recent years, or maybe to be more precise in recent decades, we changed the approach severely because we all also started to use dermoscopy as a very um, useful diagnostic tool in order to find uh, skin cancers and uh, precisely uh, melanoma in early stage. This is very important because uh, if you don't find melanoma in an early stage, you will not save the life of the patient. So early detection is very, very important. What is important um, is that we uh, detect uh, the um, uh, population which is uh, in a risk for this kind of the tumors because you know the risk factors are very different uh, uh, depending on the population you are screening. And uh, so we have to speak about uh, phototype of the patients, uh, also about their prof profession, their uh, hobbies and uh, their sports activities and also outdoor activities. These kind of the patients are also having a lot of uh, risk factors. And uh, sometimes we have to also speak about uh, other drugs and other skin, not just skin conditions, but also other disorders which are requiring immunosuppression or hormonal therapy or having other cancers and uh, chemotherapy procedures and uh, other kinds of the treatment. So what we have to, in fact, uh, to detect is the population which is uh, in the great majority and have um, a very, very uh, uh, strong risk factors. And this kind of the patients uh, require also digital demoscopy and follow up uh, as a state of art uh, in order to find uh, skin cancers at, as early as possible. And now a little bit more about my daily practice than um, let's say I'm a, a skin doctor, which uh, the majority of the time does the, um, uh, uh, let's say, uh, mole examination. This is what I like to do and this is what I'm uh, trained to do. And uh, uh, I also work at the department, which we, what we call uh, um, mole detection the department. This is the majority of the patients who are just coming for the regular visits for no specific reason. Mm -hmm. Also, we, uh, we have a practice of uh, seeing patients which are sent urgently from their GPs because uh, something is changing or they're uh, seeing something new and uh, they're uh, scared that something new is going to be very dangerous. So this is the majority of the patients. And uh, let's say some percentage, three to 10% of the patients, which are actually uh, uh, these patients which are in the risk group, these patients are sent to digital demoscopy unit. So, so there is a difference, you know, not everybody requires digital demoscopy and follow up because, you know, this is like something which we like to do, but this is, uh, you know, you have to uh, choose your patients carefully because uh, determination of the risk factors is very important. I'm also a doctor who's uh, always invited into 
preventive actions, which are actually taking part in my country, usually during the May, but sometimes in the June, because, you know, um, we are invited to some kind of, the, let's say, organized projects, which are uh, not requiring any kind of the, you know, you're not sent from your doctor, just come without any kind of the schedule or appointment and you just come and you have a dermatologist which is actually this is taking part uh, uh, in some kind of the, um, let's say um, projects which are next to the lake or in uh, city parks and you have a dermatologist who is there using dermoscopy and trying to see whether you have something very very uh, strange and you have to take an appointment with a surgeon uh, in order to remove this lesion. So this is the month when, when the dermatologists are having a lot of work. Let's say the month when we are uh, falling apart for our feet, but this is, you know, what we actually want to do and like to do. So it's, you know, when you, when you like your job, it's not difficult to do that. And um, what is interesting for me to know is, um, do you have the feeling that people, because of um, this is a really big topic on social media already, that people um, learned how to use sunscreen right, that they are more aware of skin cancer or not? Well, it depends. Uh, I don't think that uh, the general knowledge about skin cancers and uh, sun exposure or UV exposure, to be more precise, is uh, very, very widespread. Mm -hmm. I think that the patients who had some kind of the skin cancers or melanoma uh, uh, in the family or just, you know, in person experience are more uh, open to this discussion. But, you know, still uh, we don't get to see a lot of people who are very, very educated on this subject. So I think that it should be discussed more. And this mm -hmm. is the, time, the subject which is not very popular because, you know, yeah. that's, you know, it just saying to people you should not go to the sun you should not go to the beach you should put sunscreen this is not very you know it's not very funny it's not very interesting you're just you know being very very naughty and saying to people you don't have to go to the holidays no mm -hmm. that's not true you have to take uh, preventive measures in order to take care of your skin but actually when it comes to the sunscreens um, again uh, people are not uh, educated enough because the sunscreens are not used in a way they should be used first of all people do not understand the difference between mineral and chemical uh, factors which is very important because if you want to speak about total protection then you are speaking about mineral protection and mineral protection is something that people do not like to, to, to wear because it's you have this, this kind of heavy feeling in your feel, on your skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm not very popular about skin cancers and uh, sun exposure or UV exposure to be more precise is uh, very, very widespread. Mm -hmm. I think that the patients who had some kind of the skin cancers or melanoma uh, uh, in the family or just, you know, in person experience are more uh, open to this discussion. But, you know, still uh, we don't get to see a lot of people who are very, very educated on this subject. So I think that it should be discussed more. And this mm -hmm. is kind of the subject which is not very popular because, you know, yeah. that's, you know, it just saying to people you should not go to the sun you should not go to the beach you should put sunscreen this is not very you know it's not very funny it's not very interesting you're just you know being very very naughty and saying to people you don't have to go to the holidays no mm -hmm. that's not true you have to take uh, preventive measures in order to take care of your skin but actually when it comes to the sunscreens um, again uh, people are not uh, educated enough because the sunscreens are not used in a way they should be used first of all people do not understand the difference between mineral and chemical uh, factors which is very important because if you want to speak about total protection then you are speaking about mineral protection and mineral protection is something that people do not like to, to, to wear because it's you have this, this kind of heavy feeling in your feel, on your skin. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the chemical factors, then, you know, uh, SPFs um, are known that they are not total protection.
protection. There are, uh, there are, uh, there are creams which are offering protection mainly uh, from UVB, but not entirely from UVA, meaning that you are not protected entirely from the uh, entire uh, spectrum of the UV light, UV. So, uh, you know, when the dermatologist says, okay, you can, you should use SPF, it doesn't mean that you should stay in the sun from 10 to 5, because, you know, otherwise you're going to get a lot of UVA light, which is actually not covered entirely with any sunscreen, but if we are speaking about chemical factors. So, in last decades, what we actually saw uh, is that the people are actually getting a lot of skin cancers. This is not due to the sunscreen, it's, this is due to the factors uh, that uh, people are not using sunscreens in a way they sh should use it. And of course, there is also always um, a discussion about how, uh, what is the quantity that you should use uh, of these creams? How often should you reapply? And also discussion uh, whether you should reapply it after the uh, going to the sea. Yeah, but this is, this is something which is, you know, you, well, if you want to gain uh, the knowledge of the general population, then it's it's not e it's not enough that just experts speak about that to the experts and not to mm -hmm. the dermatologists. I think the dermatologists should go out and speak to the general population. This is not easy, you know, and still there are not a lot of dermatologists, there are no medical doctors which are present on social media. Still, you have this kind of, the, let's say it's, still not very polite or it's not common that mm -hmm. as a doctor you are seen on the social media because it's you know you're not an influencer and you should not do yeah. that because you're a medical doctor and you should stay in the office but this is some new let's say uh direction which should also be considered because if the dermatologists are not going to speak about that who else would and what kind of the information will be delivered and what kind of the general knowledge at the end we will have so yeah. i think that the social media are a really good um, let's say channel to spread the knowledge and uh, this is what uh, dermatologists should, should use more um, maybe let's go to the office um, what is also interesting for me to know is how many patients do you screen uh, with the total body mapping in a week, for example? So when it comes to my working day, uh, then I have uh, two, uh, two days per week when I do uh, total body follow-up. And it's, let's say, in you know, eight hours of my work, it's... It's usually around 16 patients. Mm -hmm. It's around 16 patients, I think, per, per, per day. But it depends, you know, sometimes it's even more. And uh, we're not just using total body, we're using uh, digital demoscopy also. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, you know, it just, you know, if you want to take photo of one very strange lesion, then we are using that uh, through the entire day, you know. Do the patients like the um, examination with the ETBM master? Well, first, they're very, let's say, shy because, you know, it's not easy to take off your clothes. And of mm. course, you are being photographed and, uh, you know, you're in your underwear. So it's very, very strange at the beginning. But what is important uh, is that you create a very warm atmosphere and that the patients are not feeling, you know, shy because... You have to be very friendly and to speak open about uh, being naked in front of the camera. And uh, when it actually starts, they're just being calmed because they know that this kind of the examination is a state of art and they are feeling secure because this is something which you know that next time when you come and when you're going to make the comparison of the photographies, you'll know, okay, this nevus is something which is new and this is, okay, this is scaring me, but this was last time here and didn't change. So it's, you know, confirmation that nothing is really seriously going on. When it comes to the technology, um, you know, let's say patients like technology and like the application of the technology and when you actually show them how it looks like, you know, because when you're using hand demoscopy, 
uh, you are the one who is seeing the no, but not the patient. And they're always, okay, what do you see there? You know, because using, you know, the dermoscope and it's like, <laughs> this is nothing. But when it actually showed the uh, needles on the screen and then you say, okay, you know, this is, everything is fine. Nothing is going wrong. It's quite calm and everything is just normal. There's nothing to be afraid that the patient is calmed, which is very important. And if you, if you have any kind of the dilemma, of course you can show, okay, you see, I see the asymmetry and this is not normal. This is a changing region. You see the change and everything. And the patient, it's, uh, let's say, it's, it's not difficult to make the decision to go to the surgeon because you know the, the patients don't go to the surgery because surgery is mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. so they're always trying to avoid that. Of course, if you say, okay, you see the change, and the change is enormous, and I'm really concerned. And we have to check whether this is everything okay or not, because you know the gold standard at the end is uh, histology, and the pathologist is going to say is it this uh, melanoma or not. So the patient is more uh, convinced when actually, mm -hmm. you know, you you can see everything on the screen, and of course, you know. Um, you know, in the last decades, you had the dermatologist and you were just taking the, the clothes and then you were just seeing the patient in three minutes and you were saying, okay, everything is fine. With this technology, you spend a lot of time with the patient. You study all the modes and you, you will compare all the photos and the patients are more satisfied because they are um, seeing the doctor who is very devoted to every single lesion which is actually seen there and everything is under control, which is important. So the technology is very reassuring and it's helping a lot, not just for the patient, it's also for the doctor because you usually know that patients who are sent for the digital follow-up are patients who are patients at a high risk. And also these are the patients with enormous numbers of the most. Of course, if you have 700 of the lesions, it's for me, it's impossible to say, mm -hmm. this is new and this is changed. Yeah the photography then you know this is changed this is it didn't exist six months ago so it's uh, it's enormous help mm -hmm. and of course um, you know what is important this is this technology is uh, making you able to see really really early changes making you uh, in a position to detect the melanoma in the earlier stage which is important because the the only uh, let's say um, not just diagnostic, but therapeutic procedure, which is, you know, giving you a straight option to survive is uh, surgery at the right time when the melanoma is not invasive. When it comes to the technology that we are using, also patients uh, are very interested in the artificial intelligence and they wanted to know how it works. Of course, I have a lot of patients who are um, IT experts and they're also very interested in technology. Say, okay, you have to explain everything to that. But, you know, the more, you know, even a younger generation, they are interested also in that. So technology is interesting and I like it because it's uh, helping us a lot. Nice, thank you. So you would say that uh, photophonic technology is an added value for your work, for your daily work? Yeah, because, you know, um, I'm the kind of the uh, dermatologist who doesn't work with the photo finder. This is, uh, I mean, I'm, um, I'm this kind of the dermatologist when you go, when you have ugly moles. So uh, without the photo finder, without digital dermoscopy, it would be, it would be really impossible for me to mm -hmm. work. This is, this is a part of my everyday work.